Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. This is your host, Thomas Tyree from On The Hot Podcast. Today, this is going to be the Combat Series, Combat Series episode number 36 for you guys today. Of course, this episode is going to be coming out on all four of our platforms, our Instagram account, our Facebook account, our YouTube account, and our Apple Podcast account. So let's go ahead and dive into the first segment of the Combat Series this week. I'll be sharing my Teofimo Lopez versus Jermaine Ortiz fight summary. So we seen in the world of boxing Thursday night for Super Bowl weekend, we see Teofimo, uh, Teofimo Lopez narrowly defeat Jermaine Ortiz to retain his WBO and Ring Magazine world titles at the 140-pound division in the sport of boxing. Now, looking at the judges' scorecards, the ju there was, a, 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 of course, obviously, in all combat sports, MMA and boxing, you're going to have three judges. So the judges' scorecards were controversial. Two out of three of the judges had the, had the fight scored 115-113 in favor of Teofimo Lopez. The other judge, on the other hand, I need to know what the hell he's smoking. He scored the fight 117-111 in favor of Teofimo Lopez, which I thought that scoreboard, that scorecard was truly outrageous. I mean, however you guys do it. However, you guys score the fight. That's your own respective opinions, and that's why we're here uh, for in the world of sports to talk about these things. But I think a 115 to 113 uh, judge scorecard is more respectable than a 117 to 111. That is why boxing has problems today with the judges because of controversial outcomes of having a wide scorecard uh, in terms of points scored in the fight. For a very close fight that could have went either way. And I just don't see how somebody can score 117 to 111. Sitting there with the best seat in the house. Just call all 12 championship rounds in the sport of boxing for this fight. But in my opinion, I scored this fight between Teofimo, Teofimo Lopez and Jermaine Ortiz. I scored the fight 6-6. Six to six. I scored the fight 114-114 in favor of a draw. I thought, I thought this was a very close fight in the sport of boxing, but not every fight, not every close fight in the sport of boxing is a robbery. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we need to get over the fact that every fight in boxing that comes close to the judges' scorecards and the guy that you want to win, it's not a robbery. We got to establish that. But both fighters weren't busy enough to me to score the win. That's why I scored the fight a draw. Uh, looking at this fight, Teofimo Lopez walking down Jermaine Ortiz the entire fight and not having an explosive offensive performance to me was very disappointing for the WBO world champion at the super lightweight division in the sport of boxing. I thought Teofimo Lopez could have been more aggressive. I thought he could have landed more punches being the aggressive fighter and walking down Jermaine Ortiz the whole entire fight in, uh, in that boxing ring on Thursday. But I thought Jermaine Ortiz had a good defensive game plan for Teofimo Lopez but the defense does not rack up points on the judges' scorecards. You need to be a little bit more active. He had a good defensive game plan, but there was not a lot of punches landing in favor of Jermaine Ortiz. I truly thought the fight between Teofimo Lopez and Jermaine Ortiz was very boring. There was only a total of 80 punches landed by Teofimo Lopez, and there was only a total of 78 punches landed in favor of Jermaine Ortiz. So, this is the reason why this came to the judges' scorecards, and I do believe that Tia Fimo Lopez was truly saved by the judges, and I do believe that, at best, this fight should have been called a draw instead of Tia Fimo Lopez getting the victory. There's no way in hell that he deserved a unanimous decision win for this lackluster performance against Jermaine Ortiz. And let's establish this. ESPN top rank, Bob Arum. We need to stop with these free Thursday night fights on, in the sport of boxing taking place on the ESPN top rank platform. Now, we keep seeing, you keep giving us, uh, all boxing fans, these Thursday night track star performances. We are tired of that. We do not want to see a Thursday night track star event in that ring, in the boxing ring. If you're going to have a Thursday night 
uh, event that's going to be monumental, that's going to push the needle for the sport of boxing, then please do it. If you're not, we don't want to see these track star snooze fest performances in the sport of boxing on a Thursday night when people got to go about their day the next morning. People don't want to struggle to stay up, to potentially see a banger fight in the sport of boxing, and then we get an absolute snooze fest when you get put on caliber fighters on a Thursday night like Shakur Stevenson, like Tiafema Lopez. It has not lived up to the hype. ESPN top rank, please move away from this and uh, doing this on week weekend uh, week nights and the sport of boxing. But also something I need to address though, uh, as we continue this, ESPN needs to stop this narrative. I saw a graphic for this fight on Thursday night on the ESPN top rank on live television at that that they showed ESPN showed a graphic that Teofimo Lopez was currently 19 and 0 in the sport of boxing and was a undisputed champion in the sport of boxing. Both of those graphics were lies ESPN top rank because Teofimo Lopez is not undefeated in the sport of boxing. He has that one loss and we all know who that loss came to and George Cambosis, which was labelized as one of the biggest upsets in boxing over the last few years in the sport. And to clear the narrative again, Teofimo Lopez was never a undisputed champion in the sport of boxing. Now have it. He was a unified champion at the lightweight division. He did hold the WBA title, the IBF title, the WBO title, the Ring Magazine title. He had it all. But that WBC belt was not the true WBC belt. That was a franchise title. And the franchise title is not the true WBC world title in the sport of boxing. That's why boxing needs to clean up everybody getting a belt for winning a fight because uh, for casuals you think anybody's a champion in the sport of boxing but that subject is for a different day on the combat series but uh the wbc title at the time was with devin haney for anybody wondering he was the wbc lightweight champion in 2020 at that time so tiafimo lopez was truly never an undisputed champion and going back to the graphic that i just said espn top rank this is not the first time they did this if you guys remember, if you watched that Silly uh, Lomachenko and Jermaine Ortiz fight in late 2022, ESPN showed the same graphic of Vasily Lomachenko being undefeated in the sport of boxing. But at the time, before he fought Devin Haney in 2023, Vasily Lomachenko already lost two fights in the sport of boxing. So why does ESPN top rank keep giving their top tier guys an undefeated record on a graphic, which is a bold-faced lie? But let's get in, uh, moving on. What's next for Tiafimo Lopez? So Tiafimo Lopez has some options, and he said some interesting things. Uh, I, I've seen in uh, podcasts and interviews over the last few days after his performance against Jermaine Ortiz, he's actually came out the mouth and said he's not pursuing a fight with Javante Davis, Devin Haney, or Shakur Stevenson no more. He said he's got to fight the judges. <laughs> and you just got blessed by the judges in your last performance. He's got to fight the judges, the corner man. The corner man, ain't, the, there's only two people fighting in a boxing ring. That's you and your opponent. Nobody else is fighting for you. Nobody else is fighting against you. So I want to hear the excuse I got to fight against the judges, the corner man, the referee. No. If you want to fight these top tier guys, say it. If you don't want to fight these top-tier guys, then move on with your business and keep fighting B-plus fighters and ESPN top rank. But Tiafimo Lopez does have options. And option number one is Keyshawn Davis. Keyshawn Davis is a part of ESPN top rank, so the fight wouldn't be hard to make at all. And there's actually been a sparring clip a few days that was leaked a few days ago with Tiafimo Lopez and Keyshawn Davis actually sparring each other. Uh, but he looked good a against a former two, uh, a Keyshawn Davis, I should say, looked good in his performance that he had against a former two division world champion and Perzar, uh, per Pedraza, uh, Keyshawn Davis looked good in that performance against Pedraza. He was in the co-main event of the Teofimo Lopez fight. The only other man to stop Pedraza in the sport of boxing was Gervonta Tank Davis years ago when he fought Pedraza. So the fact that Keyshawn Davis can say he's the only other man alongside Gervonta Davis to stop Pedraza in the sport of boxing, that's an accomplishment to his young 
career as he's trying to establish himself via star. Could I see Keyshawn moving up to 140? Absolutely, because this is the, I I the, if we're getting that Tiafimo Lopez, that's inconsistent Tiafimo Lopez. That's a 50-50 fight between Keyshawn Davis and Tiafimo Lopez. The only issue I would have is would Keyshawn be comfortable of moving up five pounds, going up to the super lightweight division at 140? But uh, we'll see if that fight does happen next. Uh, option two. That's a future fight with Shakur Stevenson. And I don't think that fight is truly off the boards because you see Shakur Stevenson get active on Twitter saying weight is not a problem. And Shakur Stevenson and Tiafimo Lopez are on the same side politically or signed with ESPN top rank, signed with Bob Arum. I don't think that fight is off the boards to see in 2024 at all. Uh, Shakur Stevenson could dare himself to be great moving up to the 140 pound division to potentially be another division world champion in the sport of boxing by moving up to fight Tiafimo Lopez on 140. Uh, and it kind of makes sense because Shakur Stevenson wants that big time fight in his boxing career. He just turned down a five fight deal with top rank worth $15 million to fight over the next five fights if he signed that contract with top rank, but he declined the offer and he has one fight left with top rank and has aspirations of getting back in the boxing ring by June. So I think that fight between Tiafimo Lopez and Shakur Stevenson is not off the boards and I would not be surprised if we get that fight next. Uh, but the real thing, the real uh, thing for Tiafimo Lopez is the, his aspirations of wanting to fight Terrence Crawford. So how would a future fight with Tiafimo Lopez and Terrence Crawford play out? I don't think Tiafimo Lopez would do well against Terrence Bud Crawford in a fight, in a future fight in the sport of boxing. Even if the fight was at a catch weight or at 147, I don't believe Tiafimo Lopez would do great in the ring with Terrence Crawford. Uh, I do not, and these are the reasons why I do believe that Tiafimo Lopez would not do great against Terrence Crawford. One, if you got any shot of being Terrence Crawford, who is undefeated, nobody's ever fi figured out how to defeat the man. But the, if you want to find a way to beat Terrence Crawford, that's cutting off the ring. And Teofimo Lopez has a problem of cutting off the ring. You've seen in his performance against Jermaine Ortiz, the man could not cut off the ring to save his life. Uh, wouldn't win a counterpunch battle with Terrence Crawford. As good as a counterpuncher as Teofimo Lopez is, you're not winning a counterpuncher battle with pound for pound the best fighter in the sport of boxing and Terrence Crawford. Uh, and he's had, and the, the third reason why he wouldn't beat Crawford, he's had too many inconsistent performances at 140. Looking back at his track record at the 140 pound division, in his performance, he had a shaky performance against Sador Martin. He had a flawless performance against Josh Taylor. Then just had a bad performance against Jermaine Ortiz. Inconsistency, I don't see him hanging around with Terrence Crawford at all in the sport of boxing. And let's just say that future fight is never going to happen. And it's best for Teofimo Lopez that that fight never truly happens. But those are my thoughts on Teofimo Lopez and Jermaine Ortiz uh, fight summary taking place uh, that took place last week in the sport of boxing.